G'day, welcome back to the Pickaxe Proto Platform tutorial videos. Uh, in this video we're going to have a bit of a look at the Proto Platform and interfacing that with a potentiometer and sending some values back to the um, laptop or computer with the, with the USB download cable. So to start with, um, we'll plug in everything that we need um, to use this example and then we'll have a bit of a look at the code uh, on the computer so we don't have to change once. So the potentiometer, the pins on this particular one um, actually do fit in the breadboard. They, um, they just fit um, one spacing apart. So I'm going to poke that into the uh, breadboard down the bottom. It doesn't matter where you put it but uh, if you want to copy that's probably going to be easiest. Now a potentiometer needs to have 5 volts um, power um, to one of the pins. So we'll have uh, a wire connector from positive up there down to the, the bottom which we can say is 5 volts. We'll put a, uh, a green connector maybe between the ground and um, so ground and then we one of the other outside pins on the potentiometer <coughs> and then the middle pin on the potentiometer is going to be it's really just a potential divider and that's why it's called a potentiometer I guess um, so the one side's getting 5 volts, one side's getting 0 volts and the centre pin is um, somewhere between 0 and 5 volts depending on where you turn that uh, resistive wire I guess um, and the yellow one uh, I've got set to be plugged into let me just move this across uh, P3 which is going to be the third one down but uh, you can choose whatever one you would like to use um, in your example so We'll switch across and have a quick look at the screen now. Um, I'll put all these samples up on the website uh, in a folder together, probably all these example videos as I do them. Um, it's not up there just at the minute, but uh, if you if you need it, then email me and I'll soon get it to you. Uh, if you have a quick look here, we've got very much the same code as you've seen. You're going to get used to seeing this same code. We've got the Pigax 40M2 selected. Now this is a new one, uh, this is set, set freak and uh, this isn't needed to use a potentiometer. The reason I've got that is because the information that I need to send back to the computer is in a slightly different format than um, we used in the starter platform example. Uh, and that's just because I'm going to use a second program that I'm going to show you in a tick called, well I'll show you now, called um, Serial Chart and the Serial Chart program um, actually shows us a bit of a graph of what's happening um, with the voltage that's coming in so rather than just give us numbers um, we can also have a look at uh, <coughs> some some graphs, some sort of visual display so to find that uh, Serial Chart um, software, I might do a, a separate video on the Serial Chart software but if you go to um, Google and type in serial chart otherwise code.google.com forward slash p forward slash serial chart um, that's where I downloaded it from I just found it on the net and it seems like a really um, quite simple to use program fairly reliable and uh, really good to be able to visualize what's actually happening with some of your devices so uh, in this example I've got the re yeah, so the reason I had set freak is because um, I need to use a bald rate here or bowed rate depending on how you want to pronounce it of 9,600 9, um, it doesn't work with the standard 4,800 and to be working at that bowed rate um, I needed to set the frequency to M8 um, rather than the standard which is um, 4 and I, th I think that's uh, megahertz let's just quickly check in here um, I can't remember where it is that you can see what they those defaults are. Maybe it's not in this software anymore, but yeah, I think it's um, it's the frequency that the microcontroller is running at. So we're doubling the frequency that the microcontroller is running at, essentially. Now down here, I've got an extra line. Um, I could have put this up here, and I might actually do that. So I'll take that symbol uh, out of there, and I'll just say that P19 is the SIR connection. So that's the serial <coughs> um, output pin. And that's what I've got in the code down here, so that's using P19. Um, again, we've got the terminal window coming up. 
got a pause for 10 milliseconds. This one here is saying read ADC pot one. Now, um, read ADC is going to return a value for us between um, 0 and 255. So there's 256 um, positions, I guess, or numbers that it could, could return um, from start to finish on the rotation. Uh, we can make that a little bit larger with, by using one called read ADC10 um, to pot one, but uh, we don't don't need to do that um, for today's demonstration. So that's reading an analog voltage and it's changing to a digital number. Once I've got that voltage, it's, it's storing it in a variable called um, word zero. Now I might even change that and uh, use something a bit easier, so I'll put a new symbol command in here and say mem1 equals um, word 0. <coughs> now it doesn't need to be a word variable, um, I could have used a byte variable but I'll, I'll just use it for now because I haven't explained what uh, a, a byte is. So mem1 <coughs> and here I'll write mem1 as well and uh, that should be exactly the same thing. So were the, the purple text there, which <coughs> is W0, is I've replaced that with MEM1, which is just saying that that is a storage location that can store a number somewhere on the microcontroller, and there's about uh, 13, I think, from memory um, storage variables. So I turn my microcontroller on, and it's downloading that code. And you can see that, that um, I need to put this from 4,800 to 9,600 for this particular example. And it's just doing a new line every time with 4 and it's saying that the value at the moment is 148. And as I wind that uh, up and down, so I'm moving the potentiometer now around. So that's towards the positive side and that's towards the negative side. So going down from, like I said, 256 to 0. So I'll just close that down now and show you what the serial chart does. So the serial chart um, gets that similar information and I'll play, press play. Actually there's one other thing that I need to do in here and that's just to change the oh look, no, the minimax are already set so that's good. So press play there. Had the wrong COM port selected so I'll just check with the pickaxe program which COM port I was using. I think it was COM6 actually. Yep, COM6. So I'll just change this one to COM6 <coughs> Oops. and just save that. Bold rate at uh, 9600 like I said before. The rest of this we don't really need to change. Um, it's saying that the, the first number that comes into, the mic into this program, the software, is going to be coloured red and it's going to be a number between 0 and 255 and you could change that if you had done different values. So I press play and they're all at 0 at the moment and as I wind this uh, potentiometer you can see that it goes up and down um, as I change the value of the potentiometer. So it's cool to be able to visualise um, what's happening on that, on that potentiometer and it's also giving us the values here so it says it's 131 at the moment as I turn it up towards the the positive side it will go up to 256 and this is just lost 250 or 255 sorry and then down it will go down to zero so you can see there's, there's some cool software to be able to visualize stuff and uh, I'm going to have a, another go at using that when I've got um, the accelerometer connected and we'll have three different lines hopefully uh, and you'll be able to see some some cool data um, from the accelerometer. So I'll press stop to that. Um, that's all I wanted to show in this video. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll have the code on my website as soon as I as I can in a folder, um, and uh, you can yeah have a go yourself. So next video we might have a look at uh, the accelerometer from SparkFun. Cheers, thanks for watching, bye. Just to quickly add before I, uh, do, I go on to the accelerometer um, tutorial, I thought I'd quickly show you because it's much the same um, as using 
the potentiometer, this uh, flexible strip or flexible resistance strip, I guess, uh, I can't remember the exact name of what it's called, but uh, much the same. Um, it changes its resistance as I bend it, so the more I bend it, the more that uh, the resistance changes. And we're still recording there, so um, the more I bend it, you'll see on the the serial chart program, um, you can see the bending down and back up, down and back up. Uh, you can, you know, I've seen this sort of stuff being used on like a finger or something of a glove. So uh, I think the example was that someone was doing sign language and they could uh, think about where, what position that your finger was in um, to translate your sign language into something that maybe an LCD screen could use. And uh, while I've got some analog devices going, exactly the same way as this one's set up. So I've got the positive coming into the to one side. Um, I've got a pull down resistor, so a 10k pull down resistor coming down to ground, and a yellow lead here is coming, bringing that uh, the potential divider, so the the middle position, I guess, of the potential divider um, into P3. And I can pull that out and put the LDR straight in. You've already used the LDR with uh, the starter platform but much the same as I cover that device up and bring it back up you can see that the serial chart values are changing from somewhere around 40 something up to the 233 depending on how light or dark your room is so there's a few analog devices um, to use an analog device you just need a potential divider um, the LDR and this little um, flexible strip I think both of you use a pull down resistor of, with a 10 kilo ohm value. So that's how you use the Proto platform um, with some analog devices. Cheers, thanks for watching. Bye.